everybody, this is Dan Miller for Bluegrass Unlimited Magazine, and today is the last week of December in 2022, and our December 2022 issue of Bluegrass Unlimited has Earl Scruggs on the cover. We've been focusing on banjo all month, and so this is the last week of, uh, of the banjo, and speaking of the banjo and Earl Scruggs, we would be remiss if we didn't say something about Earl Scruggs' backup playing, because it's, in my viewpoint, it's just genius what Earl does with banjo backup. Um, last week we covered some harmonized scales and we did it on these two strings. Um, I'm going to cover a little bit about Earl's backup that he did on, on uh, slow tunes where he would just do different figures on, on the chord shapes that are on these two strings and add um, other notes in there to make it just sound really cool, on, especially on a slow song. Um, the song I'm going to look at is I'll Never Love Another, and you can look this up on YouTube, and I recommend you do, and I recommend you slow down. The little uh, uh, settings tool on YouTube, if you don't know this already, will allow you to slow the song down without losing pitch, and you can go to three quarters, half, or one quarter, and, you know, slow it down on YouTube and really take a listen to what Earl's doing behind Lester's singing. It's just, it's just brilliant. Um, but what I want to specifically cover is what Earl does on the first verse and chorus of the tune because he does this, everything's up above uh, the 12th fret except for when he goes to the A chord, he goes back to the uh, 10th and 11th fret. But everything else is done up above the 12th fret, and it's only done on these two strings for, for the first verse and chorus. There's other parts of the songs where he do, goes on other strings and other positions on the neck and his backup, but we're going to focus on this. And um, the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to tab it out for you the way I hear it, um, but really the way I want to approach this is just talk about what he's doing, because... Um, you know, years ago when I started to learn how to play the banjo, I would get a tab or somebody would show me something. I would just memorize that thing and play that thing. Um, later on, I realized it's helpful if you look at what somebody else has done and analyze what he, they've done. And then if you figure out what they've done, whether it's a pattern they're using or a chord shape they're using or a scale of some particular kind that they're using, if you can figure that out, then you can use that same theory behind what they're doing, that same technique behind what they're doing, and create your own variations of that. Um, and so over the course of the last uh, few weeks, we've been delving into some of these ideas. We did some stuff on uh, pentatonic scales and, and major blues scales, and we did some stuff on the harmonized scales and how uh, you might fit that into your banjo playing, thinking of it from that theoretical approach and how you might be able to take that theoretical approach and use it to expand what you do on the banjo. And that's what I'm going to try to talk about here using this uh, backup of Earl Scruggs uh, as, a, um, as a pattern, as, as something, if we can look at what he's doing and take it apart uh, and figure it out, then we could use the same theoretical concepts and same techniques to expand or be creative on top of, of that in other songs, in other positions on the neck, that kind of stuff. So, um, what he's doing here primarily is using chord inversions. And we went through a little bit of that uh, last week when we did the harmonized scales because you get, you get the first and the third relationship. And then in ground speed, we did this first and fifth relationship. But, this uh, chord that's just like the open G, if you take that up to the 12th fret, it's the same chord. And again, we're just working on two strings. So we've got the G chord here at 12 and 12. We've got a G chord here at 15 and 17. And we've got a G chord here at 20 and 21. Those are our three inversions, and Earl takes, makes use of all of those, right? And then for C, we got the C chord here, which is 13, 14, and then we got it up here at 17 and 17. And then we got the D chord here at 15 and 16, and we got it up here 
with 19 and 19. So you got your G, you got your C, and you got your D. Those are the positions that we're going to be using. And so um, you can think about, you know, just playing that, going to C. D, uh, you can go back up, G, D, that's basically what he's doing, <laughs> but he's throwing in uh, other cool notes and other patterns of timing to make it fit the song and sound really cool. And he's doing a little bit of uh, passing tones and we'll, 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 we'll describe that. Um, so let me just play maybe the first uh, four bars of this thing, or uh, first, uh, well, first time through the, the A part on the verse, and then we'll talk about it, okay? So let's, let's take a look at what Earl does at the first part of this verse. So we started G, went to C, uh, back to G, to D, and then it goes back, back to G. We'll, we'll just talk about that much. Right here, so he's playing that G, and he's going up, adding a sixth scale degree. Just sort of a little toggle back and forth. And then what he does over the next measure is he adds the seventh, the flatted seventh scale degree. So it goes... Okay. And going to that flatted 7th scale degree is going to um, uh, give the tonality and voicing of a 7th chord, a, 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 a G7 chord. Now the next chord you're going to go to, even though we're in the key of G here, the next chord you're going to go to from, from that G7 is the C. And in the key of C, the, the G7 chord is the dominant 7 chord, and that wants, the dominant 7 chord wants to go back to the 1. In the key of C, the C chord is the 1. G7 being the dominant 7, so he's adding that tonality, uh, in my mind, over that chord to um, lead the listener's ear to that, that C chord that comes next. Now the C chord, uh, he's doing a similar figure that he started out with. The G chord he started out in the first measure with this figure, right? He does the same thing over the C chord. He goes... So that's the same as what he did over, over G before. And then he goes up to G at this position. It's a little bit different pattern. He doesn't, he doesn't add any notes to the two, two chord notes. And then he goes back to G. Does that same pattern that he did in, in measure the first measure of this. But then he does a cool thing to lead into the D chord. He goes... Sorry. So he does this little to lead in, into that D chord, which <laughs> which is really awesome. I don't know how he thought of this stuff. He's a to me a musical genius on the banjo, but that's a cool little way to. Um, Again, he's leading the listeners here to that next chord. So the D chord, again, we're just, we're just messing around with uh, the chord shape plus the sixth. Uh, that's all he's messing around with. He just changes the pattern a little bit. He changes where in the roll he throws in that, uh, that, that sixth scale degree as it relates to, to the D chord. So... Um, that's the first pass through, and so let's uh, let's take a look at what he does next. Now Earl comes back from the D chord, and, he, and it's like this. And then he's back to the G. 
before he goes to the chorus. And so that's got a lot of cool stuff. The first part similar to the first pass through but again he's just he's just playing with this flat and seventh in this sixth note in a different pattern and he and he changes that up almost every time which is which is really cool but the other interesting thing he does here is what some people will refer to as a push in that he goes to a note to the C chord an eighth of a note early okay so he's going like this Instead of going back to that um, 12th fret uh, B note, which is in the G chord, the last note of that measure is a th uh, right there, a C note. So he is playing the C note, an eighth note early, just uh, predicting the next chord. And, and that's what they call a push, is when you go to the chord a little bit early. And so again, it's... Okay, so he's going to the C chord one note early in the eighth note uh, roll, uh, which is cool. And he does this again now after he plays that C lick, back to G. So he's again, he, you look at the tablature, he's going to that note up here, which is your E note. In the C chord, he's going to it an eighth note earlier. He's going to it at, at the last and beat of the G chord, the G chord measure. So usually you would go right. But he's not doing that. He's going. And then, and then he goes into the G. And then he does this cool thing over the D chord uh, to come back to the G. Ah, uh, sorry. Coming back to the G for the last two G measures before moving to the chorus, which is going to start on a four chord or the C chord. So let's take a look at the last two measures of, uh, of G that he puts in there and then how he gets into the C chord to start the verse, uh, uh, to start the chorus, and then what he does over that. Let's look at that now. Okay, so uh, the last part of the uh, verse leading into the chorus, he's going to, again, do something similar uh, that he did in the first part of the chorus, but slightly different. He changes around the order of when he inserts the, um, the five note, the six note, and the seven note. He, he switches that around a little bit. So it's going to sound like this. So that's the last Two measures of the uh, verse moving into the four chord that starts the chorus. And let me just point out again some really cool things he does here. So he starts again on the G. He goes into the C chord once again. He goes into the C chord eighth note early. He just hits that position twice uh, with those two strings. And he goes all the way up. To that position, and then he and then he works with the uh, based on the C chord, he works with the sixth scale degree and seventh scale degree. So again, we're going okay. Again, brilliant stuff. I mean, if you just look at what he's doing in relation to the chords, how he's varying. Uh, the patterns every time he go, plays over a certain chord. Um, you know, what he's doing up here in C, first starting, first he starts on that note, an eighth note early, he just hits that C position 
for those two notes and then he goes up to this C position. Using that sixth and seventh scale degree off of that C shape. Again, the, the theory of what he's doing uh, using these chord shapes and how he's using uh, the patterns over them uh, and changing it just a little bit every time is, is really cool to look at because if you look at the patterns he's using, and we're not done yet, um, you can insert those in, in various ways all over your backup as well. Just take all these ideas and mix and match them over these chords. You know, if you're doing this over a G chord, you can do that over C. You know, you could move all these things around. And, um, I just think it's really cool the way he's pushing to the to the next chord a little bit early and uh, using these positions in in such creative ways okay so that now we're just we're finished with the first up to the first uh, C chord the four chord over the the uh, chorus and now we'll continue from there stuff there. Notice when he goes to the G and then he's going up to this position G. And then back to this. So uh, then he goes to the uh, A. Hits that note twice, and then goes to this position A. Again, he he's going to a note in that D chord, an eighth note early before he goes to this D here, and then this D position here, and then again that note he's predicting his next move to G. So it's just kind of cool that he's changing between these positions. Uh, he's changing position, he's changed each, with each chord, he's changing between the chord positions and he's uh, leading your ear to the next chord by going to that uh, chord note just a little bit early uh, a lot of times. So that's kind of cool too. All right, let's listen, let's uh, take a look at the next section. to the uh, mandolin back up from there. So that's kind of cool, a lot to unpack there. He's taking this, he's starting this G, he's doing a figure there, and then he's going through this kind of passing chord here. Going kind of like through it. To get to the C, to the G. So listen. on the one string every time through there and that's kind of again he's setting up he's setting up a, a pattern with that that I think is really awesome and then so after he gets back there he goes back up to C G and then before he goes into the, the mandolin back up he's going to that D chord again that little figure that we did earlier so that's, uh, that's what it is. Uh, take a look at the tab, uh, analyze it all, memorize the different parts. And again, I don't necessarily recommend that you memorize this particular backup, but what is cool is to take all the little pieces and parts that um, 
he's showing you here, there's a lot to unpack just in that verse and chorus of this one song. There's so much to unpack there that he's doing. Take each little bit and learn it. And then when you're playing songs, try to put those in, in, in not necessarily the same order he's done, but the same ideas he's using. That's what I recommend to make, sort of take the essence of what Earl's doing there, make it kind of your own, and use it to your own great effect in whatever songs you're, you're trying to back up. So this is Dan Miller for Bluegrass Unlimited Magazine. I've had a lot of fun uh, this month on the banjo. Uh, next month we'll move on to something else. So uh, take care and we'll see you next time.